everybody, what's up? My name is Becky, and I welcome you to my muscle function video series. This week I'm going to be going over the Summertime Notorious Muscle, the six pack, the abs, the rectus abdominis, all right? I'm gonna go over the origin, insertion, functions, and exercises, and I'm gonna give you guys some tips for building that muscle and getting it to show for summertime, all right? So let's get started with the location of it, and then we'll move on from there. So the origin of the rectus abdominis lies on the crest of the pubis, which is right about here, and then runs up the abdomen and inserts onto the cartilages of the 5th, 6th, and 7th ribs and the xiphoid process. Okay. The functions of the rectus abdominis is to flex the lumbar spine. So lumbar flexion looks like this. Okay. You're just bending over right at the lumbar spine. Your lumbar spine is down here. Okay. So that's all this is. Lumbar flexion. The rectus abdominis also posteriorly rotates your pelvis as well. Remember that anterior pelvic rotation is whenever your butt's sticking out. Posterior pelvic rotation is whenever you pull your butt under you. Okay? It is also a weak lateral flexor. Now it is a weak lateral flexor due to the fact that the obliques pick up to lateral flex the body or the lumbar spine. Okay? So this is lateral flexion to the left and to the right. Okay? Again, the obliques pick up for lateral flexion, okay? So it doesn't need to lateral flex the body. However, it does help the obliques with that motion, okay? Now, as far as exercises go, you're looking at crunches. And uh, there's also cocoons. Or they're also called shotguns. And then there's also V-sits or jackknives, you may call them as well, all right? Now with crunches, to before you even start a crunch, you want to make sure that your pelvis is posteriorly rotated, you pull your belly button towards your spine, your core is pretty much already engaged before you even lift your body off the ground. Okay, now whenever you go to lift your body off the ground, you want to only come up just past your shoulder blades. Okay, with a shotgun or a cocoon, it's pretty much curling up into a ball with your upper body and lower body, and then straightening all the way back out. Okay, crunch and curl and straighten, and then out. Okay, I'll get up here. All right, you're gonna come in and then go out, in and out. All right, now with a jackknife, you have to be careful with jackknives once you've mastered the shotgun or the the cocoon you can move on to the jackknife as long as you don't have any lower back issues because this can place a lot of strain on the lower back so with a jackknife or a v-set you would keep your upper body and lower body straight as you pulled it together so you'd have it straight and then you'd pull it together all right also there are people out there that do hanging leg raises for abdominal work. Unfortunately, hanging leg raises isn't going to work the rectus abdominis. It is not a hip flexor. Whenever you do hanging leg raises, okay, you're doing hip flexion. That is its main motion. Yes, you will work the abdominals a little bit because you're trying to stabilize your body from swaying and moving and so on and so forth. Um, but the main motion of a hanging leg raise is hip flexion. Now if you were to do a dead hang uh, toes to bar not using a swing beforehand yes that would work the abdominals because you then from this point all right, would have to bend the lumbar spine to bring your uh, feet to the bar. Okay so again uh, that's a different way that you can do it. However, you must be careful because just like the jackknife, that can cause a lot of lower back pain or a lot of strain on the lower back. To reduce the strain, remember the longer the lever, the heavier it is. Okay. So to reduce the strain on a toes to bar, 
It wouldn't necessarily be a toes to bar, but you can bring your knees to your chest. You can have bent knees, okay, and then bring your knees up, okay. And that's from a dead hang. There's no swing prior. You don't want to use any momentum to get your legs up because that isn't going to help you work out your rectus abdominis, okay. That will make it a whole lot easier and make it seem like it's uh, a not a hard exercise at all. Unfortunately, it is if you are a starter. So um, start out on the floor first, and then you can move on to several ex exercises. Excuse me. Now there are different ways that you can do crunches. You can do decline crunches, butterfly crunches, frog crunches, uh, so on and so forth. There are a big, big list of several other types of crunches or several different ab exercises. Um, again. My list is not a list in its entirety, uh, so just do some research, try some things out, and try to remember the function of the rectus abdominis so you know how to work it. So now that we've went over everything I normally go over, now I can give you guys some tips and tricks for summertime. Now for summertime, depending on how you want your abs to turn out, whether you want the real thick washboard abs or whether you want to just tone, tighten, and be sleek. Now if you want the real thick washboard abs, you're looking at building from body weighted exercises and then once you are comfortable and advanced enough with those, you want to move on to weighted uh, exercises, abdominal exercises. If you want to just tone tone, tighten, just be sleek, uh, flat stomach, you want to do a lot of body weighted exercises, uh, a lot of volume, and you, want to, you might every once in a while add in some weight to them. Unfortunately, if you add too much weight too many times, you may start to gain size or thickness in your abs. Okay. Um, I tend to have a lot of thicker abs because I add weight to my abdominal work. Um, that's really the only way I like to do my abdominal work so I will have more of a thicker uh, ab look. So I tend to have more rounder look because I build my abdominals outwards. Okay, If you're looking to be sleek, toned, tighten, you're looking at doing multiple uh, body weighted exercises with a lot of volume. Okay, now that will tone and tighten, and then the other way is going to build the muscle. Now, as far as working your abs for the summer, okay, the exercises and the ways that I gave you isn't going to bring your abs out. Isn't going, it will tone, tighten, strengthen, build uh, your muscle. Muscle builds under fat, okay. But if you have a layer of fat over top of your abdominals, it is not going to uh, make your abs show for summertime. You can't spot reduce. It is a myth, okay? The only way to spot reduce is to do liposuction, okay? There's no other way around it. You can't just spot reduce from here or your arms or your legs or your back. It all comes off at its own time. So in order to get rid of the layer of fat, if you have any over top of your abs, is through cardiovascular work and your diet, period. You can do the exercises as many times as you want, and it will tone, tighten, strengthen, build your abs as much as you want them to. But as long as you have a layer of fat over top, it will not completely show on um, the people that you see in fitness magazines so on and so forth that is not how they look on a regular basis okay that's not how they look on a regular basis they trim down to look like that um, for magazine photo shoot purposes okay there are some people that maintain a lower body fat percentage for instance I tend to uh, maintain a uh, around about 14% body fat percentage 
pretty much all year round, okay? Females shouldn't go much lower than that, if at all, only because it can cause some health issues, which is a completely different uh, thing at this moment. But to get your abs to show, along with the ab exercises, you want to do cardiovascular work. It doesn't matter whether it's steady state, high intensity, whichever you prefer, you know, make it so it shapes to your goal, your main goal that you're trying to achieve. And then also watch what's at the end of your fork. If you're constantly eating hoagies, candy, um, any, you know, chips, soda, you're going to keep the weight on. You're not going to shred down. You're not going to lose the layer of body fat over top of your abdominals, okay? You need to add cardiovascular work with diet to your exercise, okay? So I hope I've helped everybody. I hope I didn't disappoint anybody. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, some people tend to lose weight faster than other people. It's all about fat, uh, body fat distribution, placement, and all that. Um, people are different. People are individuals. So please don't judge yourself by anybody else. Uh, you really need to worry about just you and what works for you. So again, thank you for watching, and I hope everybody has a great rest of the week. So see everybody.